let me talk about the second kind of economy which is called as the market economy. The market economy is also called as the capitalist economy and the basic features of a capitalist economy are first of all there is a private ownership that is nearly everything is owned by the private individuals which means the government has negligible role to play in the production of the country. The next feature is that the people have the freedom to opt for any kind of occupation. There are wider choices to make. They can either be businessmen themselves or they can be a part of a business house. That is, nobody decides, they themselves decide upon the kind of occupation that they would like to pick up. Then the consumer sovereignty is at its best in the market economy. There are wide choice. For example, if we talk of on the roads, there would be cars of so many makes and at competitive prices, which means the consumer has so much of choice to make from that the consumer becomes the king. So the best part of a market economy is that consumer is termed as the king of the economy. The next is the price mechanism. By the factors which are there of production, consumption, need, requirement, the price mechanism gets decided. The next feature is that in the market economy, that is the capitalist economy, the sole profit remains, the sole motive remains profit and profit alone because every individual is working towards that aim. Every businessman would be making or would be wanting to make profit and profit alone. So these are the features. Let's talk about their merits and demerits. As far as the merit is concerned of the market economy, the best is that the solution of all the commodities of all the problem comes through the price mechanism system which gets adjusted itself. The next is that because the competition or rather the profit is the main motive so the cost of production remains minimum in the market economy. Because nobody would like to waste more, nobody would like to spend or have more overheads, they would be doing their best in the minimum cost. And of course, the individual keeps on getting motivated in the form of incentives that he draws. If you are a good worker, you get a promotion, you get a hike, you get uh, other such incentives which make you a better worker than before. This system also nearly speaks of being democratic in nature because everybody has a choice to make, everybody is free to pick up any occupation or freedom of spending your money the way you want to so it becomes more democratic in nature. The spirit of enterprise becomes more and more amongst the people. Everybody feels that I want to earn more than the other, making you more competitive, making you more enterprising, which is the best for the health of any economy. Of course, this economy also comes with demerits. And the first glaring demerit is the inequality. Now what happens is, when there is inequality, it becomes very wide. The rich become very rich and the poor become very poor because there is the owner and there is a worker. And higher prices also start coming up because everybody wants to make more profit. So that means we are setting our prices at higher limit. The class struggle starts between the haves and the haves not, the employer and the employee. 
the public welfare gets totally neglected because who's bothered the only profit and profit is our motive this also leads to trade cycles and of course the trade cycles give rise to unemployment and unemployment is the worst kind of demerit seen by the capitalist economies.